your moderator of this session and Paul. And、um, it's very good to see you guys can like came here and this session like after the lunch break. And I have to announce some of the keeping the house information for you. And the、um, as you can see, like、uh, we have a lot of collaboration notes and the Slido question platform. So you can look it up on the、um, Golf Zero Summit website. 那如果你是需要呃、uh, 你是不熟悉英文的朋友的话，那你可以到 g v s u m m i t 的网站上面。那我们上面会有那个即时口译，还有共笔，还有我们的 Slido 的提问系统。但是我们待会这个 session 的讲者他是预录影片。那 The following、um, session will be the pre-recorded video. So, but you still can be like、um, put the collaboration notes on our website and like. Um, submitting your question to onto the slider.、Uh, okay, so the final stuff. This venue is prohibited to eat or drinks. So if you like to、um, like having some of the food, you have to like leave this room. Okay, so let's get started. Hello, this is JP. I'm the founder of Data Sketch. I'm gonna talk to you today about community-driven data interoperability with three、um, use cases or three different solutions that we work with different types of、um, clients. So let's start.、Um, I'm a data scientist. I'm based in Bogota, Colombia, and I run Data Sketch, where we Democratize data science tools for those organizations who do not necessarily have access to、uh, programmers, designers, and they need、uh, quick questions, good、uh, answers with、uh, their own data. So, yes, let's start.、Uh, we can think that data and algorithms will solve all of our problems,、uh, but in reality, as you、uh, may have experienced. Uh, we first need to collect, analyze, visualize, and、uh, organize the data to make good decisions. And this could be a bit challenging because usually data comes in multiple formats.、Uh, data is difficult to collect.、Uh, it's not necessarily easy to collect data from multiple sources, as it is the work usually when we talk about、uh, issues that relate to、um, what I call human problems. Uh, like issues about、uh, the climate, or about health, or about education. These type of issues are usually difficult for us to understand because the data sources to get information properly is not necessarily accessible, especially especially for smaller teams who lack access to proper tools to process all this information. Uh, then uh, it's very difficult also to know which are the Uh, best ways to compute and analyze this data, and when you want to visualize it, there are hundreds of ways to visualize、uh, data that make sense. So it could be tricky for different types of users to understand how they can communicate their own data to impact different decisions. So、um, one of the main challenges that we have seen in terms of data interoperability is that. We have multiple small data sources, unlike、uh, industries or traditional industries like financial, telecommunications, or e-commerce. In the work of NGOs or governments or even media organizations, we see uh, very uh, interesting challenges when we want to collect data from smaller data sources, like the census data or accounting systems or surveys or information about、uh, the market. Or many other、uh, indicators that could be useful for、uh, analyzing and understanding a specific issue. So, we in it, in order to improve data interoperability, we need to be more comfortable working with smaller data sets and with many different smaller data sets. This is the type of work that multiple organizations are doing, and、uh, we need to use better open technologies so we can leverage the work of this、uh, as. With these smaller data sets, data sets. 
One of the main challenges is that organizations uh, usually even sometimes even when they're large, they don't have a skilled personnel uh, for processing vast amounts of data or even finding them and accessing them. And they don't have accessible tools to uh, process these uh, vast amounts of data sources that live in silos in multiple systems. So uh, one of the uh, main challenges that we see at this point is that um, with the advance of artificial intelligence, we need to make sure that we are uh, ingesting data that is locally relevant. And the, in order to do this, we need to find better ways to uh, collect and organize the data that is useful for those uh, people who are making decisions uh, at a local scale, say an indigenous community or, uh, or a local city government. So once uh, you have a bunch of people collecting data for multiple sources, you want to uh, organize this data in a single database. And from there, uh, visualize it or create different interfaces that make sense for the different use cases. Different types of users, they need different types of data to be able to process all this information. So if you're uh, the mayor of a city, you may be uh, want to uh, take a look at uh, an epidemic or a, or a pandemic, and then you may only need a map of a heat, a heat map of the city to know where to uh, do some interventions. Uh, but if you are some uh, someone working in the uh, legislat leg legislature, maybe you need a detailed report on the impacts or uh, something that uh, in society, and it could be like a lengthy report that is very technical. But if you're a newsroom, perhaps, perhaps or, or a journalist, perhaps you need a tool that you can make a simple chart and communicate a big challenge. So there are many different interfaces that, that we could build. So uh, let's start with uh, ex the scenarios I just talked about. We work in uh, our organization. We work in multiple types of projects. We're NGOs, uh, with uh, journalists, even with local governments. I want to highlight these three uh, cases of different solutions that we have implemented and how they help uh, in their own way to collect, visualize, and create this sense of community to interoperate data from multiple sources. So let's start. Uh, the first case is the local government in Mexico City. Uh, they had a challenge that they they had a, an open data portal in the city. When the pandemic, they had to go to uh, another uh, solution to go to an open data, sorry, open source solution for the system. So they could uh, integrate better the, the, all the data about the city, about mobility, about um, homicides, about education, or uh, different types of data sources that are relevant for the citizens of Mexico City. So uh, when I show you, uh, I want to show you quickly here. It's a, it's a video that the city made uh, of the system that we created. Portal de datos so um, I'm just going to skip uh, over a few parts and show you how the system uh, works from the very same video that they did. Uh, so if you look at the uh, open data portal in Mexico City, you have multiple uh, data sets in different categories, and you can skip to a data visualization site uh, or section where you can see some data sets, like here is the metro um, users in, in the city, and you can see all the different trends that you can visualize with this data visualization tool, which is uh, part of the data visualization portal uh, that we built. So uh, you can use multiple options to filter by dates, by um, years, by neighborhoods, by metro stations, or different types of filters that uh, let you visualize and understand multiple data sets that uh, there are in the city. So there are more than 2,000 data sets, and we created this tool so uh, the different users, uh, citizens, could exp explore and understand the different data sets that are right now uh, in Mexico City. So uh, this is part of the of a solution that we created, created automated dashboards to visualize this type of data sets. 
So I'll just do it here and show you how we uh, created this solution. Okay, so uh, the city uses Seekan, which is one of the most popular open data portals uh, software, which is open source. Uh, it's used by in different types of, uh, in different countries, in Canada, in Mexico, in the US, in Uruguay, uh, in Australia, uh, you name it. So the, the interesting thing is that when you use this type of uh, software, you have access to different data sets that are stored in the system. And they have a good API that allows us to create a custom extension that will improve considerably the visualization options that the open data portal has. So uh, this is this type of visualizations are not a standard with the Seekan software, and we were able to create a better interface to interoperate all these uh, 2,000 data sets that are updated uh, continuously via the platform. So multiple. Uh, secretaries in the city, like the Secretary of Mobility, of Education, and, and many others, they interoperate and upload their data into this system. And we found a way to use the metadata that is uh, sound so that we could create a data visualization recommendation engine and that we could have a specific and custom uh, data visualizations for all these data sets automatically, uh, which is a, a very nice addition to the uh, capability of integrating data. Because once you allow citizens to export and explore the data in multiple formats, it becomes more um, necessary for the local administration to be able to create channels to interact with the citizens. So in here, you see an example of the different geographic visualization options that the portal uh, has just so you you can not only visualize tabular data but different that data that comes in other formats like uh, maps in so some learnings about this project so building an open source software and creating extensions is something that is very valuable uh, also the manual data curation and the and the human processes behind this data uh, so it has good metadata is also something that's worth noting uh, because they, they had a, a very articulate team that were able to put together all this uh, data in a, in a clean way or in a, in a good way so it could be processed. Um, we can have open data portals that are more user friendly. When we allow users to create data visualizations, it helps them communicate with others what the data is uh, lying uh, in different public entities in the city. And with the use of open, open source software, it's very valuable for, uh, for extending the capabilities and maintaining the solutions. Okay, so now we can talk about the small newsrooms. Uh, we created a project with a, uh, with that we call the data management system for newsrooms. Uh, with, together with El Confidencial, a newsroom in Spain, and Vox Europe, uh, a pan-European uh, newsroom that's based in Belgium. And we created a solution for them to access data from multiple uh, European data sources, like the OCDE or the Eurostats portal. They each have their own APIs, and we were able to connect to all this data that's being collected by multiple uh, European agencies and the Organization for Economic Development uh, that integrate all these multiple data sources from these different countries that becomes very valuable for journalists uh, in these newsrooms. So the main challenge they're having is that uh, data access is not necessarily easy for journalists that are not trained in finding the right data sets. And there are usually time constraints when you are reporting on, on different topics where you need to find data quickly and you uh, need to be able to reuse some data that you have used in the past, which is not necessarily easy to do with other types of tools. So what ends up happening, uh, again, is this model of small data that lies in multiple computers that's not uh, easy to find or collaborate on. And so we created the data management system that allows to plug data from spreadsheets, from public data sources, or automated data scraping, 
integrate them, and then create different uh, data visualization apps that the journalist can use to understand and query the different data sets that are relevant for the reporting. So once journalists uh, use a data set, they are able to save it to their own library. And so they have a, a data repository where they can find all the previous data sets that they have uploaded and, and cleaned or prepared for uh, previous reporting. And also, uh, once they have saved or searched for a specific data set, they are able to uh, use um, data visualization tool like this that allows them to make different charts or, or maps from this data. So when, when journalists uh, select the data set, they can also upload uh, a spreadsheet, a CSV file, or an Excel file. And then they get automatic data visualization recommendations that work with the type of data that they uploaded. And once they are happy with this data, they can save it. So one of the other innovations in terms of user experience is that um, we included, a, a, we are working on the inclusion of a button in their own CMS uh, system. So in their content management system, the, we are integrating a button that allows them to make charts directly from their own CMS. So in this way, we improve considerably how they interoperate their data because they can pull data from uh, the statistics center or the census data or different data sources, and they can include them directly in the, in the news report that they are writing. So this is uh, very valuable and helps streamline the whole process of accessing data and also publishing it and sharing it with a wider audience. So uh, once they hit the button, they see some uh, data that they can pull from public sources, and then they can customize a map or a chart to use in their own uh, news stories. Uh, so this is currently be being tested and piloted thanks to a, a grant that we all um, received from a program called Stars for Media. So this uh, basically tells us that uh, big data uh, is mostly for machines, in our opinion, and that we should focus on working with the smaller data sets that are interoperable and that we can use to share data with other humans, not necessarily with more machines. So when we share data with people, with real persons, we usually do it in a way that's more narrative or more visual. So uh, if we find ways to interoperate these smaller data sets, it will be very valuable for other users or other people to interact with this data, but also uh, very importantly to go back to the data that was used to create the different types of visuals. And this of course will help other uh, types of users uh, that eventually will upload more data and create like a commons, an open data commons uh, between citizens that we can all use to understand what's happening in society. Great, so let's go to the final use case. This is a biodiversity research institution in Colombia and a local uh, community. So let me start quickly with a, with a story. This is the story of uh, Alexander for Humboldt who is, uh, a, was a very well-renowned scientist in the 1800s. Um, he was friends with, uh, just a curious fact, was, curious, was friends with uh, Goethe, who was a poet and writer, German writer. And Goethe also worked on the theory of color. He worked about a book about that. Uh, and they probably had interesting conversations about how the visual aspects of understanding the world is valuable, and Alexander von Humboldt took this uh, long trip around South America or the Americas to understand what was going on um, in in the world, especially in the natural in the natural sciences. So we he arrived to to uh, Latin America, and he spent some time in in different countries in Venezuela and Colombia, and he ended up here in the Mount uh, Chimborazo which is a mountain in Ecuador, and he was able to develop a whole theory of ecosystems and how the humans are impacting ecosystems. 
And he did this by collecting smaller data sets that you can see here. So he was able to measure temperature, uh, pressure, and other types of measurements that he collected manually uh, from like records that he was writing on a, on a notebook, but also from uh, collecting different samples of spe species he found uh, around the, his trip. So he was able to create this vision of the world from smaller data sets that he was collecting manually from all these places in the 1800s. Uh, and that brings us to uh, the Awa community. Uh, here you can see it's a, an indigenous community uh, in the border of the Colombia and Ecuador. And in there, uh, I was giving a workshop on for this community to tell them how you can collect data or the data they collect in their uh, work, basically in ecotourism routes. They are able, they are also helping, while well, they do that, they are also helping uh, the national government to collect the different observations of different species. So they fill in manually uh, these cards, uh, written by hand. Uh, and then we talk to them about the process of all this information, how it uh, gets synced with different databases throughout the world. So they can visualize all the information from their species observations. This is actually a picture from, from this place, a beautiful place. Uh, and this is an example of a recording of a bird that I took with my cell phone. So here is uh, like a, a visual depiction of this uh, sound of this bird. And then we can use data visualizations to show how uh, this bird um, lives in different parts of South America. So we see a collection of what we have discussed, small data, um, data visualization, the work of local communities that integrate data in multiple systems. And this happens uh, all over the world. So in, in the biodiversity space, there is this Darwin Core, which is uh, a data specification for, inter for interoperability of uh, biological data and observations of biodiversity. So there are many different organizations in the world, you see the map right here, that they integrate all this data and the observations from universities, from uh, local communities, as you saw, and this information gets synced back and forth between, say, Cornell University, where they have like a large registry of bird species and sounds. And then uh, all this data gets collected and shared among multiple universities, and it goes back uh, to a country like Colombia, my country, uh, where we build a data visualization tool to explore all the biodiversity data about the country. So we can see uh, data visualizations of the endangered species or where, our, uh, where we have seen the most mammals in the country. We can have specialized geographic profiles for different regions. So we click in a specific region in the map we can see all the different uh, species that are around the area, how often they, have, they, they are seen, which are endangered, and, and so forth. So it's a very interesting application of a visual interface, which is in this case is a web page, to explore this information in a more natural or, or simpler way for uh, non-biologists like myself. So we have seen we're from all these three different use cases that a lot of these efforts come from integrating, integrating smaller data sources that are collected by people. Then we can build some processes to organize and catalog this data properly with the proper metadata. And then we can create multiple interfaces to uh, visualize and understand this data or communicate this data in different ways. So we can have like a web page, like I show you, we can have an interactive dashboard. We can have a map uh, for a news report or things like that that are very valuable and useful. And so one of the things that we are experimenting right now is creating AI chatbots or what we call AI chartbots to create charts uh, from, uh, from prompts, from text that you can uh, then use to improve how different people create charts and, and maps only with textual descriptions. So we hope that all these interfaces help improve how we integrate the data in different ways. Here you, just, you see an example of, uh, of the solution where we improve uh, accessibility for elections data in this case, 
where you can type some question like what is the race distribution of this part of the country or who was the winner of these states and then you get automatically different charts and maps that get displayed. So this type of information, we think it reduces the friction for non-technical users to access data and you can give it a try. Just uh, go into datasketch.co and help us build the AI for small big data and interoperability that makes sense to solve big um, human problems. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, here is my contact information and uh, I hope you like the talk and uh, feel free to contact me if you wanna discuss further. Thank you. Hello, this is JP, I'm the Okay, um, thank you JP for his presentation.